Hello everyone, today I'll be reading the history of Amir Hamza, part 2 of Interpreter of Winds by Faraz Ahmad. Let's begin. There is a history they used to tell in the Malay lands, when there were still kingdoms and when there were still kings. There once lived a scribe in the kingdom of Darul Tazim, which was considered to be the greatest penman the Malay world had ever seen. His name was Amir Hamza and he was a royal scribe for the king of the abode of dignity. It was not long after his appointment as a royal scribe that the kingdom declined and became a British colony. It declined not because of trade, for its trade with both the old and new worlds was flourishing. It declined not to, for want of military, military might, for no war broke out and no blood was shed. It declined because it had allowed itself to be mapped by the British. One day, the new lord of the kingdom summoned Amir Hamza and said, Her Majesty has sent an expedition team to the Malay world to, correct, to collect curiosities from the colonized lands and the ship from which the expedition sailed in. I have seen the orangutan from Borneo, a man running amok from Pahang, and the Singapore stone. I, however, would like to give Her Majesty something less vulgar, something that would suit her more refined tastes. And what do you vision this gift to be, Lord Campbell? Amir Hamza asked. In the abode of dignity, there exists the greatest Malay manuscript ever written. It is said to be 400 years old. Each page is gold-plated and each character etched on the page is made from ink ground from the bones of the nightingale. I, however, have made a promise to your father, Tain, that I will protect this manuscript. As such, I would like to replicate the Hikayat Muhammad Hanafiya. This copy will be first presented to Her Majesty the Queen and then displayed at the British Museum. Thus, Amir Hamza took on the arduous task of replicating the Hikayat Muhammad Hanafiya. Many weeks later, his good friend, Abu Bakar, saw Amir Hamza sitting listlessly by his desk. Oh, Amir Hamza, why do you look so sullen? Why are you not completing the task given to you by Lord Campbell? His friend inquired. My dear friend, I have fallen in love. I have fallen in love with the princess while she is no longer the lo royalty she once was. She still demands of royal things from me. She demands that my expression of love be known and yet non not known outside this kingdom and that once known, it will have to live forever. My beloved friend, she has set upon you a most perplexing and impossible of tasks. It is wiser that you focus instead on the task at hand, upon which you will be rewarded handsomely. Once you are rich, you will no longer have to trouble yourself with such things. Amir Hamza took one long look at the manuscript and said, you are right, friend. From today, I will work day and night to finish this manuscript. It will consume me, just as how the poetry of Majnun consumed Leela. Upon its presentation in London, the queen rejoiced at the beauty of the manuscript, although no one in her court understood its language. After the queen lost interest, it was given away to the British Museum. Visitors gaped at how the gold edges of the pages glittered under the ray of the morning sun, the use of the traditional Naski script to depict specific Arabic verses, with the distinctive roundels that marked the end of each verse protruding into the margins, and how the ink echoed the texture of the paper. But the public, too, soon lost interest in the manuscript. Many years passed by. One day, a returning British official from the Malay land who had immersed himself in the most archaic languages of the Malay world, noticed something peculiar in the text during a visit to the museum. The introduction to the text bears the following words. I, Amir Hamza, have been tasked by Lord Campbell on 17 March 1824 to replicate the manuscript known as the Hikayat Muhammad Hanafiya. I have understood that this exercise is merely to satisfy the curiosity and whims of the Queen of the Land of the English whom I have not and will never meet. 
It has also occurred to me that if this manuscript is to be displayed in the museum as a curiosity, then it does not matter what is written in it. I have therefore decided to pen an ode to my love, for she posed to me the most challenging of tasks. To make my love to her both known and yet not known beyond the shores of the Malay world, and that once known, my love will have to live forever. One day, dear readers, and many years from now, you will learn our language and acquire the ability to interpret our texts, just as you have learned to map us. One day, when that happens, you will read my ode and part the secrets of my heart, and the secrets once out shall live forever, protected and encased in the everlasting memoriam of knowledge you call the museum. Thank you so much. Once again, this was Interpreter of Wins by Pharaoh Sandler.